our story starts with a man by the name of Wakelin. Wakelin was born the eldest son of a shipper. He didn't like the burdens that came with this and long ago spat in the face of the responsibilities that came with his birth. And he moved from town to town, begging for what he could and grifting where he could get away with it. He was on a road one night. The town he had been begging in had grown wearisome of him and had grown to know his grifts. So he walked along and he heard off in the distance the sound of horse hooves. Now, he had broken no laws that he was aware of, but he certainly was not the sort of person who was ever happy to see the watch. And he moved to take cover in the trees while they passed, lest it be the local guard. And as he turned, he sees a figure beside him, where a moment ago he would have bet his life there was none. This tall figure atop of a horse with a sword drawn, standing before him. He begins going through his mind to think of whatever quick lies will hit him on his way the most quickly, but he has the lies in his head, but the words simply will not come to his lips. So he stands there. The figure simply points behind him to the horses coming over the hill. And over the hill, he sees what seems to be an army. Soldiers clad in armor, banners flying high, and amongst them he sees what he believes are, are prisoners. They're not shackled, they're not bound in any way. In fact, he couldn't think of a reason why he knew that they were prisoners, but he knew with more certainty that they were than the sun would rise the next day. As the entourage approaches closer, he sees something very unusual in his midst. He sees a number of soldiers on foot, and behind them he sees women in torn rags and bloody faces who are driving them forward with spears and stabbing them and, and tormenting them as they walk. Well, Callum looks up to the figure, the figure beside him, and the figure says nothing. One of them comes closer and he says, Why is... Why are you being driven by these women? Turns to him and, and says with a haunted look in his eyes, these, uh, This is the woman whose virtue I took by force and life. When my country invaded, we plundered and raped and did what invading armies often do, and this is the, the price I paid. And what Helen knew is he was Seeing this, he was seeing an army of the dead. More soldiers came along. There were peasants following behind a number, burning them with the torches that had been used to scorch their homes. And Wakelin is just baffled by the sight that he, he sees before him. And he knows no one would possibly believe him, but he, he simply decides he must tell his tale. He must convince others of what he has seen. And so he gets an idea and he decides he will take one of the horses. And he grabs the reins of an unattended horse and a nearby soldier grabs him and holds up his sword and says, You dare to steal from the dam! Kellen is certain he is about to join them. A soldier steps forward and says, Stop! And the soldier turns to the beggar and says, Will you trade your life for a favor? Of course, he, see, he says yes. And he notices this particular soldier has a cloud of bees about him, constantly stinging at him. He says, In life, when we came to this country, and after having plundered it, I stole from a man, an apiary, and bequeathed them to my sons. The man from whom this was stolen now lives in squalor. Please, can
carry this message to my sons to return this to the proper owner so that I may be free of my price for this pregnancy. And while Helen is certain he will be thought a fool, and he says, I, how can I possibly deliver this message? No one will believe me. He says, go and deliver this message and return here in a fortnight. That is the price of your life. So, he goes to the location uh, given to him by the soldier. He goes to the aviary and he, he tells the story. And not to his surprise, he finds the sons certainly do not believe him. But he, being a beggar, gets a very good sense of people and figures out a, a way to keep his promise. And he s says to him, come to me, with me to this location in a fortnight and see that this message is real. If you do not, I will be your servant for the rest of my days. And his sons are, are most eager you know, they, they are certain this man is crazy, but a crazy servant, servant is certainly a valuable one. <laughs> and so his two sons go with him, and much to their astonishment, the army returns, and this is not the rantings of a crazy man. And from amongst the soldiers, he finds his father, and the father says to his sons, you know, this was not mine to give you. I stole this from another. You know, your benefit from it has far outweighed any labor you put into it. Please return it to its rightful owner. The eldest of the son ends. He is utterly indignant at the suggestion. Your sins are not mine. We do not carry those burdens. This is ours and it shall remain that way. Father turns to his son and says, You are... Life will lead you in its end to the same place that it has led me. And since you are so eager to join the damned, you will do so now. And he grabs his son by the wrist, pulls him up onto his horse, and the army gallops off into the night. The youngest son turns to the beggar next to him and says, What do we do now? Kellen says to him, What now indeed? Thank <laughs> you.